Hey guys, it is me again. This is um, going to be Radial Design in Pixlr Part 1 because I know I won't be able to finish it in this setting. So I'm going to do what I can. So we're going to come up here to the URL and I'm going to put in pixlr.com. This time I'm going to do slash E. Because I want it to be E, and we'll see if that makes a difference. Oh, it does. See, it's E, and that's what we want. So here's one that I had uh, played with before, and uh, was learning. So I'm learning it too, so I'm so I can teach you. So that that's one that I had done. But I'm going to start one because you're going to be starting one. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go file. We want something new. So I'm going to go. Well, let me go to home Let me, because you're going to be like this and you're going to create new. So you're going to create new. Now, I want this to be a square because this is a radial design. So you see this right here. You, I want you to come down. I want you to scroll down. And I want you to pick up one of these squares. Now, this is size. So 1080 is the smallest. 21, well, 2048 would be the next one here. Now we don't have to use these sizes, but they're already there. So we're, I'm just going to go ahead and use those sizes. I'm going to go ahead and, and click on this one, the high medium. It's called 2048. So I'm going to click on that. And then that changes up here. You see that's there right there. So now I'm going to put uh, my radio. I'm going to call it my radial design. I already have one called my radial design. I have one called my radio and my radial design. I'm going to go ahead and call it my radial design. And I'm going to create. And there you go, there's my square. So now I've got to bring in my picture. So now I've got to find a picture. Uh, and I want a full, I want you guys to have a full length picture of yourself if you can, if you can get somebody to take one, or if you've got a picture of yourself. So um, I don't, I could I went through my library, I couldn't find one of myself, but I, I, I'm gonna use a student, a student from the past. So I'm gonna come here and I'm going to Open image because I got to find the image on my computer, and I know it's on my desktop. I already put it on my desktop, and let's see if I can go recent. Yeah, there it is. That's the picture I'm going to use. All right, so this is a student that uh, graduated, I think, two years ago, two or three years ago, but I'm going to use it. Now you see when I did that, it. it it went to a new picture, a new tab, instead of going where I wanted it. So what I'm going to have to do is I can just take it. I can grab it. I should be able. Well, I'll just copy it. And I'll come over here, and then I'll paste. And now it's on there. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it just so. But. What I've got to do now is I've got to get rid of that whole background. Now, the way I do it, and I think I showed you how to do this before, there's different ways to do it. You got the tools over here, these selection tools. I like to use a big rectangle at first. That's how I like to start mine. I get rid of this advertisement. So I'm gonna take this rectangle marquee. And delete. I did this backwards. I think that I can pull the rectangle. Yes, it lets me pull it. And del and delete. Do one over here. And delete. And do one here. I'll move it down a little bit. I'll cut off the feet. And delete. All right now. I can't do anything else because that's still going and I don't want to make another rectangle. So I've got to select D select or control D for short. Now I still got to get rid of all this. And remember here's the magic wand. I could click on that and click, but I have to be real careful. See it's going inside of her because it selects the colors that are close. 
and I don't want it in here. So that didn't work because it's cutting in there. So if I was in Photoshop, I could do something different, but this program I'm not real familiar with, so I'm just going to undo it. And now there's also this lasso tool, and the lasso has different up here. It's got different, it's got a polygon, bezier. The bezier I don't like. When I try to use the bezier, I just, oh, I'm not on the bezier. I'm still on the lasso. The lasso works like that, where it, I can just take an area and just go like that. This bezier, the bezier tool, I had trouble. See how it's curving? And so I have trouble with that one. I, I couldn't figure that one out. So I won't ever use the bezier. The magnetic, it likes to, let me get rid of this here. The magnetic tool likes to clean the things. So if I wanted to go around her head, I could click and as I move down it's gonna it's gonna click the things that are of different colors so you might find now see how it kind of went off there so that's the only thing about it is it's, it's not as you don't have a lot of control over it although that looks pretty good so I can delete that but then I've got this section right there so that's the magnetic because it, it'll cling to a, a section of different colors. And then the, the polygon is, is like the pen tool. So you can always use that one too. That one you control, you click and you move. And every time you click, you can change direction. So I click and I click and I click. So it's like that pen tool that we used in, uh, in Gravit. So, so that's that one. But it never fails for me. It never fails. I get to a point where I have to use the eraser. But I do think I can do a little bit more here. I think. So I like to use the rectangle and marquee because I get big chunks but it never fails I always end up having to use an eraser when I get close now I and I know some of you guys are perfectionists too some of you are not but some of you are um, and you want it to be perfect and if you can't get it perfect sometimes you Sometimes you get upset, you, you want to give up. But here's what I do. So I'm going to show you my secrets when I do things like this. I want the eraser. Here's the eraser tool right here. It's right there. So I'm going to click on it. I can change the size of that eraser tool. I can change the hardness and the softness of that eraser tool. Do you see how that's changing that? So the harder it is, the edges are going to be crisp. The softer it is, the edges get fuzzy. So let me show you how they that works. So if I'm going to come over here, I've got the eraser, and I've got it at 41 right now. I'm going to zoom in. I do like to zoom in when I use the eraser. And then I'll use the eraser. Now, I've got to be careful because here's what's going to happen. Because it's got that soft edge, that blurry edge, if I come here and I get too close to the head, I'll end up thinking I'm erasing just a little bit of it, but I've erased some of her head. Now here's another secret I have. When I get to this point, I want a, a background color that's going to be contrasty so that I could really see what I've erased. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to this bottom layer, and I think that pink right here that's right there is going to be a good contrast. So I'm going to get on the paint bucket right here the fill bucket and I'm going to come back here and I'm going to fill that background with that pink. So now when I come up here, I do got to make sure I'm on the right layer when I go to erase. In fact, I think I will lock this layer 
so I don't accidentally erase that layer. But I want you to see what I did to the head. Do you see that? See how it got really fuzzy right there? So now I've got to, oh, now I'm going to undo and I'm going to undo that pink. But uh, I got to do that to get her head back. So another thing you guys can do is you could duplicate that layer of that person you're going to uh, erase. And that way, if you mess up too much, you got the backup. So I should have done that too. So let me let me come back here and undo. See, and I can edit undo. I can keep undoing. Just keep edit undo there. I got to there. Now I'm going to do what I just said I should have done to begin with. So first I'm going to take that layer and I'm going to duplicate that layer so that I have that backup in case I mess up so so much. So I am going to this this check mark right here that'll make it if I click that that makes that un it invisible so that that's not you can't see it it's there but you're not seeing it and now I'm now I'm going to come back to that layer and fill that layer and then I would come here now I'm going to erase so now I'm going to get on that eraser and now I'm going to be really careful and see where that white line is right there you see the white line that white line is where the edge of that fuzziness is. So I know I've got to be really careful. I do like a soft edge brush when I'm erasing a person or anything, actually, so that it looks more real because I'm, I'm going for realism when I do this kind of stuff. Because if I use, let me show you what happens if I use a hard edge. If I use a hard edge, then I also, I also run the risk of it looking like it was cut out with a pair of scissors and it didn't do very good. But if I take my time, I can actually do pretty good. But see how that that's like that? That's where a soft edge, and you can control the softness, the edge, the fuzziness. So I can get really fuzzy on the edge or slightly. And that will Allow me to be really careful. Now, see, I cut in there too much. Let me edit undo. I cut in there too much. Another secret I do sometimes when I'm doing a person and I, and I know I'm going to want to be really careful around those edges. Another thing that I will do is I'll take the opacity down when I'm erasing. And then that way I can get real close to that edge and I'm not, not as worried about it cutting in as much because I've taken the opacity down, so it's not erasing everything on the first try. So I have to kind of keep going over a couple times. But then, when I do that, I do a pretty good job. And then it's pretty natural looking. So that's another one of my secrets.